God, both holy and gracious, your word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. Let your word so dwell within us that our words would echo yours. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you this morning. Grace and peace. Jerusalem is a different city depending on who you ask and when you ask. To ancient Israel, it is the center of the world. It is the home of the palace of David and Solomon, the temple to God on Mount Zion. To ancient Rome, it was still a beautiful city, but the political power had been moved from there. Herod the Great had expanded the temple and made other beautiful public works, and it remained the center of hope for the Jewish people, both in Israel and throughout the region. Today, Jerusalem is home to holy sites from all three Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It contains the Temple Mound and the Western Wall of the destroyed temple. It houses the al Aska Mosque, which is where Muslims believe that Muhammad ascended into heaven. It is home to the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, the site Christians believe is where Jesus rose from the dead. Jerusalem is everything right and everything wrong with holy sites in our world today. People gather at sites holy to their faith and then they fight over who can control them, who can live near them. Sites central to three world religions but contested international and national politics and economics determine the value of human life around them. Jerusalem is the disputed capital of both Israel and Palestine. It is a multinational, multicultural, multi-religious city where all the agendas of the world are contested. In our readings in the gospel, Jerusalem is that place, that city, where the world can know God, but chooses instead violence and separation. The Jerusalem Jesus is crying over saying, you can choose, but you don't. How often I have wished to gather you under my wings as a mother hen gathers her chicks. The Jerusalem Jesus is crying over is Christ Church New Zealand where 100 people worshiping God in mosques were shot and half of them died. It is New York City, both on 9-11 of 2001 and today. It is Orlando and the Pulse nightclub. It is San Bernardino, California, and Paris and Charlie Hebdo. It is the place where the proponents of violence reject the prophet, whether that prophet is Jewish, Christian, or Muslim. It is the place where the lives, where the ways of life and death are set before us. And the world chooses time and again for death. We live in a world where extremists of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, and other religions as well, are perpetrating violence that victimizes good people of Islam and Judaism and Christianity people of all other faiths and of no faith. And Jesus weeps over the city. Because there is always the opportunity to choose God. But the world trusts in fear and violence and force far more. So we mourn this day with our Muslim siblings. From Mukad Ibrahim, age 7, to Haji Duad Nabi, age 71. From Abdullahi Dirieh, age 4, 
to Amjad Hamad, 57. We mourn for Husne Ara Parvin. She was 42. When she heard the violence, when she heard the shots, she ran to see if she could save her wheelchair-bound husband. He was carried out and lived. She was shot and killed. There are many more names. Not all of them have been released yet. Names that are unfamiliar on our tongues because they are Arabic, they are Pakistani, they are Syrian, they are other. Pastor Otis Moss III said in reaction to the set of shootings that somewhere in heaven, Sarah and Hagar hold each other weeping, asking, how long, O oh Lord, how long? Sarah, the matriarch of Judaism and so also Christianity, and Hagar, matriarch of Islam. Just as Jesus in our passage here weeps over Jerusalem. But Jesus does not run. You know it's bad when the Pharisees come to you and say, get out, Herod wants to get you. You know it's bad when the people you argue with all the time come and say, you got to look out. Herod, who uses fear and violence and force with great skill, is coming to get you. But Jesus does not run. Instead, he says, go and tell that fox I'm busy. Now, fox is not used here like Disney in the Robin Hood cartoon from years ago where the fox was clever and quick and played the lead role. This is fox as in the scavenger who gets the scraps after the dogs have left. He's calling Herod vermin. Jesus gets all the really good insults in the Bible. We, we miss them because we don't hear them that way, but... When he calls Pharisees unmarked graves and brood of vipers, them's fighting words. Go tell that fox I'm busy. I'm working today and tomorrow and on the third day. And whenever we hear on the third day, how long was Jonah in the whale? Three days. How long was Jesus in the tomb? Three days. Go tell them I'm working. Today and tomorrow and on the third day. Instead of siding with the fox, Jesus sides with the hen. This seems kind of strange because we know the troublemakers when the fox gets in the hen house. How I've longed to gather you under my wing so you would be safe like a mother hen does for her chicks. It seems strange to call out fear and violence and force and decide with faith and hope and love, but that is what Jesus does. And that's what Jesus calls us to do. Yes, we have a gun problem. Yes, we have a white supremacy problem. Yes, we have an extremist problem. But we will not solve these with fear or violence or force or by any of the other choices the world is so fond of. What we will solve them by is with faith and hope and love. And so I read to you a prayer written by Reverend Lori Walkie. She writes, Hello, brother. That's how they greeted the faithful arriving for prayer. That's how they greeted the man who would open fire just a few seconds later. Hello, brother. If it had been here where we used pews instead of prayer rugs, the only difference would have been the follow up question Do you need a worship bulletin? Hello, brother. These words are not included in the manifesto left by the shooter. These words are, the words of the shooter are words of fear and violence and white supremacy. He wanted those to be the words heard round the world, for manifestos are not meant for truth, but for mass consumption. But he will not have the last word. Love has the last word. 
our Muslim kindred tell us so. In the midst of this terrible darkness, they went again to the mosque. They knelt again in prayer. They whispered again words of hope and peace. They said again to each other and the whole world, Hello, brother. Even as they rage and grieve. Holy One, help us follow their example. Let them be assured that we stand with them, we pray with them, we walk beside them, for all of us need all of us to make it. Love will indeed have the last word. We pray in your holy name, which binds us to one another with a love that will not let go. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit. Let us join together in hymn number 212 in the black hymnal.